What if I told you sound is more important than video? Here's the thing, you can still get away with good quality sound, bad quality video, but if you have bad quality sound and good quality video, you'll find out that you're gonna lose an audience member or two along the way. And here's why. We have five senses in the human body, taste, touch, hearing, sight, and smell, right? How are we gonna use all five of these to properly convey our story? Well, we can't, simple as that. In the world of video, we can only use two of those senses to properly convey our story and fully immerse our audience and to make them feel like they're actually there. And that's obviously sight and sound. As filmmakers, we need to fully understand how to use these two senses in order to fully immerse our audience into the scene. And this is where sound design becomes a crucial element to every film that you produce. The film you're watching now currently has no sound, but watch what happens when I add music, and environmental sounds. Suddenly, you can almost imagine being there. Your senses are heightened not only by the visuals, but by what you're hearing. The sound in a film can not only immerse, but also change the viewer's mood dramatically. Now before I carry on I just want to give Artlist a huge shout out for giving me some affiliate links to hand out to you guys. Basically just sign up using that link in the description below and if you sign up for an annual plan you get two free months on Artlist. They've got a wide variety of options from a basic music and sound effects to your all-encompassing music, sound effects, AI voiceover, which is pretty crazy, might I add, and um, video templates, plugins, everything you really need to really up your video editing game. So huge shout out for the kindness there, Artlist. If you want to sign up using that link, you're also helping me out a little bit by supporting this channel and ensuring that I can carry on creating for you guys, providing you with hopefully helpful tutorials in the future. Anyway, back to the video at hand. I'm sure if you've watched a lot of YouTube videos like I have, you probably come across a few of these as well. First mistake would be not using professionally recorded sound effects and music. To really set your film apart, you need professionally composed music and professionally recorded sound effects. This is where Artlist comes in. Everything's been professionally recorded in a studio by a trained artist with years of experience. It's really quick, it's really easy to do. All you need to do is just browse around for the right thing you need and download it and just add it onto your timeline. Done deal. Not layering your audio properly enough. Now what I mean by that is on your timeline you've got your video track, you've got your audio track, you've got music and you've probably got a few sound effects down below that. As well. Now, when it comes to sound design, small increments of sound make up a whole environment. Start off small and building up your environment around. Ha analyze your footage, have a look what's in the scene, and imagine how it would sound if you were actually in that scene. If you're looking at a beautiful waterfall and a small river flowing past your viewpoint, obviously if it's on the actual shot going on the right of you, you would pan the sound across to the right. That already is a fantastic change. Just that small little change of just panning the sound slightly to the right is already a lot more immersive, just leaving it straight down the center. Then analyzing what else is in your scene by building up sounds would really help the viewers immerse themselves further. By that I mean, have a think. Okay, you've got your waterfall on the right hand side, but what else can you hear in this scene? If it's a forested environment, you might hear some birds chirping, some wind, some crickets perhaps in the grass. Whatever you want to bring to life, in your scene, you can. You don't need to see something to know that it is there. And this is the great thing about sound design. Imagine to yourself if you're standing there in the actual environment. If if the waterfall falls far away, it would sound different, right? It wouldn't be as loud. So you would drop down the volume. That immediately makes a huge difference already. Also, the opposite is, is true. If the waterfall's close by to the camera, you would increase the volume by starting off small and making small incremental changes to your volume, to the panning, will really help to build this environment where your viewers can get immersed into. And lastly, if you do not have 
a music subscription or access to a music subscription such as Artlist, then I highly suggest you try and record your own sounds as well. It's not always possible to do that, I understand. If you're out on a shoot and you're busy, just physically can't, there's no time, uh, or you don't have a sound engineer on set, these things do happen, then a sound library is vital. If you can record your own sounds, absolutely do it. It's authentic, it's yours. You can do with it what you need to and whatever you want to, so 100% do it. So now that we've got the mistakes out the way, uh, let's have a look in DaVinci Resolve itself and see how we actually go about adding these sound effects in, right? It's about time we do that. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve. We've got a small little video, about 30 odd seconds or so. And I'm just gonna add some music and sound effects to the mix. And uh, let's, um, let's run through it, shall we? First, I'm going to play this just without any of the um, of the music. I've already got a track in place over here, but let's just have a look at it without any of the music. We've now looked at the footage. We've seen it's a beautiful natural scene high up in the mountains, beautiful landscapes, some animals, whatnot, some waterfalls. Now. I've added some music to it. Now see how this changes or evokes some kind of an emotion already. So next what we want to try and do is create a more immersive look and feel to the video itself. Uh, we want to try and captivate the audience and make them feel like they're actually there. So I'm going to head over to Artlist and I'm going to go over here to Sound Effects. And if we look at, if we just go back, the first the first clip in this video is beautiful little landscape, some rolling hills. Uh, we've got some sheep as well. Firstly, I'm going to just start with the basics. I'm going to start with a an atmosphere sound. So something you would expect to hear when you're walking through the mountains, maybe some wind noise, uh, some leaves rustling, that sort of thing. So I'm going to just try and go for, to say nature. That sounds good, but maybe it need something a bit more. Not quite. That sounds good. Right, I'm gonna download that one. And um, let's see, we've got some, some sheep here in the foreground as well. Let's see what would happen if we um, search for sheep. Could work. Right. I want to import these. So we've got our natural sound there, and then we've got some sheep. Uh, there was a raven here here. I'm going to just 
cut that sound out. I just want the natural sounding tones. And I'll just let that run through the entire video as well. Just with our shape. I'll do that the first clip only. All right. So that sounds pretty convincing. On our second clip, we've got a waterfall there. Third clip as well, we've got some water running through there. So maybe we need to find a waterfall source. get that one just in case not quite yeah, that sounds pretty good let's grab that one all right so let's just refresh Add that on a separate channel as well, just in case we uh, we need it. I'll start this a little bit earlier. So normally with clips like this, I can use the same waterfall. Uh, all I'll do is I'll cut that there, move, remove a section of it, and then drag it back in just so it does sound like it's cutting a little bit um, because there's two different waterfalls. So let's see if we can cheat it that way. that the same for the third one. Right, so the waterfall essentially stops there. We've got another waterfall there. Let's delete that one clip there. And then again there. However, now to really blend the sound in, we can see that on the actual preview of this video, the sound is more on the right hand side of the perspective. So we're going to pan the actual sound clip over. So I'm just going to click on the sound, wave, sound file there. I'm just going to use the pan function. Let's have a look. Maybe a little bit over and let's bring it back. Excellent, that's better. So I'm gonna do the same with this one. And you bring it over just a little bit more. to finesse it a little bit I'm just going to bring this over and let it go across the next clip but I'll let it fade out just slightly I'll let this one fade 
fade in and again I'll just let it overlap with the previous clip a little bit and again just pan it a little bit more to the right and again just let it overlap just a little bit So now we've got a, a lake here. We've got a sheep there as well, but you can see you're quite close to the sheep itself and you can see its mouth isn't moving. Therefore, if I were to actually add a sound effect on there and right now, it just wouldn't sell it. So I'm going to leave that one as is. And I'm going to move on to the next clip uh, where we've got a lake and you can see that, okay, there's some water there and we may want to introduce some of that sound effects in there as well. So just a gentle bit of water rippling against the rocks, a bit more atmosphere. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to go back to Artlist now and I'm going to just search for lake so we don't we're not looking for a frozen lake a bent lake maybe maybe we'll come back to that one yeah i think let's go with that let's go with that because we're quite close to the water it sounds it sounds like we could sell it drop that in there Yeah, that can work. And I'll just let it fade out as the actual video fades out as well. Right, and there you have it. Small, subtle little things that add a lot more depth to your actual videos. And it's really that simple. By using the sort of a less is more principle when it comes to volume and overdoing it, there's a place and time for, for those types of things. And it's always context dependent. Always analyze your scene over and over and over. Watch the video once, put it to bed, come back the next day, have a look at it again with fresh eyes, get a friend or family member to come and watch it with you and ask them about it. Ask them if they heard something that really didn't sit well with them or if it didn't sound realistic and let them give you feedback. This is probably the best way to actually find out whether you're on the right path when it comes to sound design or not. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and activate the notifications so you never miss a video. Other than that, keep on creating and I'll see you in the next one.